Here we go. Christmas edition of Peacock and Williamson, our last pod before the holiday. I hope everyone's having a great holiday out there, making our preview and picks for week 16. Some quarterback shakeups as well in the NFL this week. Coming up right now. NFL analyst Brian Peacock and former NFL scout Matt Williamson bring you expert NFL analysis every day in less than 30 minutes. Get an inside look into the NFL on the field and in the front office. With elite breakdowns, next level analysis, and in-depth information only for the real NFL fans. This is Peacock and Williamson, and it starts now. Welcome to the Peacock and Williamson NFL show. Brian Peacock and Matt Williamson with you at BD Peacock at Williamson NFL on Twitter. Feel free if you're watching on Christmas Day, Christmas Eve, you are watching some of these football games and uh, you think of a question pops up in your head, hit us there on Twitter. Today's episode of Peacock and Williamson is presented by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. Pick two to five players. If they score more or less than their Prize Picks projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on that entry. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code locked on. That's prizepicks.com, promo code locked on. What's the what's the peak what's the the Williamson plan for Christmas Day, Christmas Eve? There's so much football Ooh. going on. How do you balance family and football because this is tough Poorly. in the household and traveling around a couple different, you know, grandparents' houses trying to catch all the games. Uh, trying to do podcasts uh, it's an interesting time during the holidays with uh with work and family and stuff because you want to enjoy the christmas season but i'm not really trying to miss any football games either right i mean I, frankly i feel like i can't you know i mean i'll pay slightly less attention this week than usual but first of all happy holidays to all merry christmas you know i hope everyone has a blast this weekend absolutely um so my saturday is hopefully Still got to run this by the fam, and the fam's walking in as we speak right now, but we're talking about our Christmas plans. Um, I'm hoping to watch the 1 o'clock games here as much as possible, Red Zone, all that good stuff. And then we go to my sister's place for dinner. She is inviting us earlier than usual because, you know, the the Steelers play Saturday night, of course. But I got to get my butt home. Uh, I'm not watching Steelers games with, the nieces and nephews and aunts and uncles trying to take notes at nine ten o'clock at night with holiday cheer that ain't happening yeah and i'm on the pregame show so i gotta get my butt home for the pregame show which i'm on like 45 minutes before kickoff and then settle in i'm not sure if they're coming with me back here or not or if we're taking two cars but basically the second i get home it's work time um there'll be a little holiday cheer in my glass i'm sure but oh, yeah. you know watching the steelers taking notes like always But then the next day, we're hosting, which means a lot of work around here that needs done. Obviously, you know, we'll put the kids to work, and my wife's awesome, and we'll do most of it. But games start at one again, and we're going to have brothers-in-laws and parents and and all these kind of all all sorts of family over. So I'm just going to have to do my best to pay attention on Saturday. Yeah. For for me, luckily, wherever I'm going to be, uh, everyone's cool with having a game on the TV. And right, as long too. as there's another uncle, cousin somewhere in there that's also interested in games, you can kind of have a faction of, hey, cool, let's hang out with some treats here over here, watch the game a little bit, have a little conversation while we're watching the games. Kids are running around. You kind of get everything done at the same time. And so, yeah, it's it's usually good vibes and able to do it. But, yeah, less attention paid to some games, and uh, which tends to happen. But, of course, yeah. we'll back and rewatch, and we'll have everything covered for you on Monday after – all of this weekend's week six games, some quarterback shake. So, so my apologies ahead of time if I don't know every play that happened in Denver Rams. Yeah, <laughs> you know, there's some things so are going to be a little less priority. Yeah. And, and I am going to record a bunch of games. Probably when people leave here Christmas Day, I'll put stuff on and watch them quickly and you know just to be on top of stuff. But it's hard. And it's never popular when the uh, the Steelers are probably at the worst time slot for the family get-together possible. Yeah, so, yeah. So that, bad bad year for that. I do a lot of family Christmas Eve stuff, and and so yeah, Christmas Eve bigger here. Similar situation, although there's a lot of Niners fans in the fam, so it'll definitely be on the TV. Um, let's start actually post Christmas here with the Monday Nighter, yeah, with the Chargers at Colts because we've got a quarterback shakeup, Matt. With it's actually the second time this season that Matt Ryan has been benched, and they're not going to Sam Ellinger; they're going to Nick Foles to quarterback this one now for the Colts. Uh, what are your thoughts here on the Colts Monday nighter with the chargers and new quarterback, Nick Foles? I think 
desperation has officially set in. I think this is close to rock bottom or close to it. I, I think this is going to be a non-competitive football team searching like crazy for any kind of answer at quarterback. Maybe they are, you know, doing Ryan a favor, you know, at this point, you know, less hits, shut them down. Um, my hunch is, I mean, people don't realize the way NFL teams work, but I bet Nick Foles has gotten very little reps with the first team or, I mean, he's probably the scout team quarterback, especially during that stretch when Ellinger was playing a lot. But he is an NFL star. He's an NFL backup. I've never been a huge Nick Foles fan. I'm sure he's the healthiest of the group when you mix in health with experience, you know. And so I guess he he's fine. I, I really don't think that they have a shot to be competitive. And I'm sitting here looking at their last eight games. They've only won one of them. I mean, they they beat Vegas in one of those the, that first Saturday game by five points. So they're they're seven losses in their last eight tries, four losses in a row. They've given up 93 points in the last two games. 93. That's a lot of points. <laughs> That's a lot of points. And just How many points did they give up? The biggest your, lead, biggest, they it give, gave away the biggest lead in NFL history. Like, they can't just, be in a good place. They gave up 33 points in their last half. <laughs> right, right, right. So it, it's getting worse as we speak. Yes. Bummer for Matt Ryan. Two coaches in a row are like, hey, cool, we got Matt Ryan. And then they're like, uh, you know, never mind. Let's not play Matt Ryan anymore. So yeah, enough yeah. of that. Looks like the end, and, and it's it's becoming like cold, like quarterback careers go to die in Indianapolis. So if you're like right. Aaron Rodgers and you're like, you want to go to Indianapolis and watch your career end unceremoniously there? Um, that, that's sort of uh, the, the path that this is this is taking here with the Indianapolis Colts. But yeah, don't have great vibes for the Colts here on Monday Night Football against the Chargers. Chargers playing much better football Colts playing not good football Chargers favored by four and a half according to bet online here on the road on Monday night and uh, I'm gonna give up those points because I like the way the Chargers are going here I think they're gonna uh, fully be uh just uh I was gonna say charging but I can't say charging into the playoffs but you know the <laughs> momentum of the, playoff, the other day yeah yeah great exactly. electricity here yeah right you're right um I just like the the vibe for the the Chargers heading into the playoffs here with Herbert, yeah, uh, healthier than he's been all season, with uh, more weapons around him, healthier than they've been all season. So let's, yeah, I think the Chargers are that team that you might want to look out for in the AFC in the playoffs, and, and they're going to keep on rolling into the tournament. Yeah, the uh, the holiday cheer might not be in full force Monday night in Indianapolis. Like, I'm not sure that's going to be a home field advantage. I'm sure the Colts fans have seen enough of this nonsense. How about this one in New England? And this is a knockout game for the Bengals to knock the Patriots out. Potentially, uh, the Patriots, if they fall to seven and eight on the season here with a couple to play, they're going to be, you know, basically mostly over, especially with what's going on at quarterback for the Patriots now, especially with the way they lost the game last yeah. week. Cincinnati Bengals at 10 and four, as hot as anybody uh, going into New England here. Cincinnati only favored by three points. I'm going to give up those three points for the Bengals just because I love the way they're playing and I don't like the vibe of what's going on in New England. And now, and, and we just learned this right before going on the air, uh, Bill Belichick sounds noncommittal on even Mac Jones being the quarterback, right? Right, right. I mean, I, I think the offense is flat out broke. Well, the passing game's flat out broken. The, the offense goes as far as Ramondre Stevenson can take them. The, the Bengals' defensive staff is just phenomenal, and they will – make this really really difficult on the Patriots and I'm done I mean with all respect to Belichick of course he's the, an all-time great but I'm done with Bill will get it right you know he'll, he'll write the ship he'll figure this thing out they don't have good players or good coaches and I think that thing is broken I think the Bengals blow their doors off like three to me isn't even close I think this should be seven and a half I think it's hilarious that Julian Edelman, former Patriot, is kind of going in on the Pats right now. He was, at, I think it was at the game, and there was somebody who got the camera on him. And I've seen it kind of go viral a little bit on some social media channels where he's just like, what was pretty much what everyone else is, but he's, you know, he's a former Patriot. So it probably hurt him a little bit more sure. at the end of that game. Like, what was that? And then he was on a podcast this week I saw talking about Mac Jones. He's like, how come on, dude? You're an athlete, you're an NFL athlete. You're just going to sit down and let the dude run run right through you to beat you and, and lose the game and and someone else brought up the the point uh i think he was on with brandon marshall and brandon marshall is like 
well, you don't, you know, you're a quarterback. Bill Belichick's not going to have you doing tackling drills and stuff. And he's like, well, you don't practice um, yelling at your coaches and your teammates and you don't practice <laughs> your celebrations after touchdowns when you do right. this, right? So you, you would think you'd be better at this one aspect of playing football, at least get in his way, drag him down or something. So Julian Edelman even kind of going in on the Patriots right now. Former quarterback Julian Edelman, not the typical quarterback type, though. Um, uh, Edelman's an interesting dude, tough as could be. I'm not going to blame Mac Jones for that, though. <laughs> of all the people to blame, Mac Jones is at the bottom of the list for that play. Chandler Jones, too, right, with this, the condor-like 35-inch arms, and that's pretty right. easy to space yourself away from a quarterback who's, yeah, again, not attempted to tackle probably in uh, the last half decade. Right, and he's not the best quarterback athlete out there. Or, you know, I mean, True. yeah, I'm not blaming Mac for that play. That, that one wasn't on Mac. There, there's They're a lot right, of bad right. going on, though, and it sounds like Bill Belichick might start to be blaming Mac or Matt Patricia might start to be blaming Mac. So, I don't know. It just seems like a disaster mm -hmm. right now with the with the New England Patriots. I guess there's no denying, speed. though, that when Zappy's been in there, the offense has been better. I mean, it's a small sample size. But yeah. I mean, been, or at least as good. You at know? least as good, right. Yeah. So, we'll see. Zappy Jones, I don't think it matters to me. Give me, uh, give me those Cincinnati Bengals. Yeah, big. All right, more on Saturday and Sunday, Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, triple header for week 16 next. Today's episode brought to you by Audible. Audible is releasing a slate of new football podcasts that we're sure you're going to love. That's why you'll be able to find an episode of The League available as a bonus episode on the Locked On NFL channel. And by the way, make sure you're subscribed up to the Locked On NFL channel. It is the YouTube home of Peacock and Williamson. Narrated by Super Bowl champion and legendary smack talker Richard Sherman and sports broadcaster Taylor Rooks, The League is an eight-part docuseries about the most bizarre, inspirational, and unlikely stories connected to America's favorite sport, pro football. Uh, you won't want to miss these untold stories spanning from the 1940s all the way through present time. Uh, our bonus episode is called The Way of the Cowboy. And it's an incredible story of the 1977 Dallas Cowboys brought in Bruce Lee's protege to teach their defense martial arts Wow. ushering in a new approach to the way that the league trains. We've seen Aaron Donald with the knives and, and you know, the, with hand fighting and, you know, and, and playing with their hands is so important. So head over to Locked On NFL for that bonus episode of The League or catch the full series wherever you get your podcasts available now. Audible, get in the game. Thanks again, everybody, for making Peacock and Williamson your first listen every single day. Make sure you check out Locked On Sports today. The biggest stories around the sports world in 20 minutes or less, plus instant reactions, game recaps, and Locked On's take of the day. Locked On Sports today available on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. What do you think? Is this just a, a little tune-up here for the Buffalo Bills going to Chicago, or do they have to worry about Justin Fields and the Bears, who every time Justin Fields has played a game, I feel like they've kept it close yeah. and lost, which is kind of like the the ideal scenario for the Bears to make sure they stay at the top of the draft, but still, you know, their, their, their quarterback of the future progresses and starts to look a little bit better and, and makes you feel better about what 2023 and beyond might hold. Yeah, I mean, you look at this and say – the Bills might win the Super Bowl. The Bears are probably going to pick second in the draft. They should crush them by more than eight. I don't really feel that way, though. I mean, I'm sure there'll be some sort of weather in Chicago. Not that that really matters with Fields or Allen at this point. But you're right. When Fields plays, they're hard to play against. And I heard this on some podcasts yesterday and that the Bears are on pace right now to run the ball at a higher percentage than like any team since like 1950. <laughs> I mean, I mean, that's all they do. And it makes them hard to play against. They got two good backs. Herbert's coming back. The defense has played a little better. And I'm a little worried about the Bills O-line, non stefan Diggs players on offense besides Allen, of course. So I'll take the points. I mean, they're scrappy and hard to play against. Yeah, I like that. I, I like the Bears at home here, taking the home dog, mm -hmm. taking the points, taking an ugly win for Buffalo to get in and out of town with an ugly win, with the Bears keeping it close as they have. One thing that does worry me about this Bears team, and Matt, this is kind of a – and we don't have a ton of time to get into this because we got to make picks for, for the rest of these games, but Justin Fields is, is such a big part of their offense, and he's getting yeah. hit a lot. And, you know, he's kind of he like is. getting dinged up. And we've seen Kyler Murray go down with the ACL. He, was, he wasn't even touched in that injury, but Lamar Jackson and mm – -hmm. um, 
Jalen Allen tightened an elbow, yeah. and you know, right. and, and Allen got hit early in the season. He's as, as equipped as anybody, six five, mm-hmm. two forty, to take some of those hits. It's like we've seen almost as many quarterback injuries as I mean, the 49ers have lost two starting quarterbacks, right? Right, uh, right, being hit. So the Rams, you know, some of these teams, right. have got, Rams and Panthers have gone through a million, you know, right? And, and, and I talk about this a lot in Locked On 49ers because we the didn't even get to Arizona it. yet. Oh boy, yeah. <laughs> I, th- I feel like we have as many quarterback injuries as, as running back injuries yeah. and running back is that position that, you know, the, uh, the attrition rate is like a hundred percent. So um, th- it's interesting with the way that I'm just, you know, just putting it out there. It's interesting the way the league is going more running quarterbacks, but hit players are hurt players. So is it sustainable to build your team around just that? Yeah. Or, you know, like I look at the bears, especially because how, far into running the football they've gone you've got to also protect your quarterback and with guys like josh allen who are such good passers already it's like okay let's protect him from himself you got to do something you cannot keep getting your quarterback hit i, I promise we'll talk about this a lot in the offseason and frankly there's two things i'm looking forward that the football outsiders warren sharp uh pro football focus people smarter than me do the studies is are running quarterbacks good investments? Because I bet a lot of people dig into that this year, just for all the reasons you mentioned. And we didn't even mention all the concussions that quarterbacks have had this oh, year. And, and the, the Lamar Jackson contract is like the big, right, right. This is the big one because he you know runs as much as anybody. Mm-hmm. And you don't want to take that away from what he does, but you would think that's going to, I mean, that's going to make his longevity shorter. And he wants the most guarantees because of it. So I think the Lamar Jackson contract is going to be fascinating because if Absolutely. you're – the, the the Ravens, I would understand where you'd say, man, we'll pay you a lot every year, but the guarantees is what we're worried about. And Lamar Jackson probably thinking like, well, look what De- Deshaun Watson got. I want bigger than that. I want all the guarantees because I want to protect myself. Uh, so that could be a weird stalemate upcoming and, and fascinating. No doubt. A little birdie told me that they may entertain a trade for Lamar Jackson, but maybe we'll bring that up next week. Yeah, I mean, there will be plenty of that in the offseason to mm-hmm. talk about. Let's get to some of these uh, some playoff implications here in in Week 16. Christmas Eve, there's the 5-9 and nine Saints who, oddly enough, are still not out of it at 5-9. and nine right. Because uh, everyone has either five or six wins in the NFC South right now. They are at the 6-8 and eight Cleveland Browns, speaking of Deshaun Watson. Browns at home favored by 2.5, according to Bet Online. I think I just want the points here. I mean, the Browns have been pretty broken since Watson's come back. Um, maybe Kamara can exploit a really bad run defense. Uh, I don't have any confidence in either one of these teams, to be very honest. There's a couple games that are just not real exciting, but this one still does have playoff implications. I think I just want the points. I'm not sure who the better team is. I'm going to go the other way and, okay. and, and take the Browns at home, two and a half. I, I think the Browns are a better team. Should be able to win this one by a field goal and get Nick Chubb back on track and 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 run the ball better. And we're seeing Deshaun Watson get a little bit more comfortable, a little bit better. So maybe this is the week that that, that happens for them at home. Maybe some bad weather, you know, that might uh, help the style of play for the Browns more mm-hmm. so than the Saints. So give me the Browns in this one. I mean, I think that's what you're hoping for for the Browns. Is I just want to see Watson take a nice step forward and resemble the quarterback that we paid for. This is a nice matchup for the Tennessee Titans who are in danger of losing the AFC South to the, the hard charging Jaguars. Um, the seven and seven Titans though, are hosting the one twelve and one Houston Texans, Tennessee only favored by three. This is probably one of the closest lines we've seen from the Texans recently. And the Texans have been playing some teams tight. Yeah. I'm not uh, ready to go Adam and Eve on a raft here or anything, but I will take the three points. You're going to get Malik Willis. I mean, it has to be all Henry, and that might be more than enough to win by 20 in a game like this, but I'm going to put a little stock into how Houston's played the last two weeks and keep this close. Yeah, and and, uh, with with Davis Mills, by the way, (laughs) you know how Davis Mills played last week because he outdueled my quarterback in the Locked On Dynasty Football League. Oh, you're going to bring that up. And uh, I know you've been wanting to bring it up this week, so I'll let you talk about it, but Davis Mills, uh, you've got to be a huge Davis Mills fan who uh, helped your team knock off my powerhouse roster by a half a point in you the Locked On squad. Dynasty League playoffs. Yep, you have a good squad. But Team Williamson scored 119.04. Team Peacock scored 118.56. So I, be- I beat you by half a point in reality. Wow. And I'm moving on with my Davis Mills, Daniel Jones-led squad. Look out amazing <laughs> i'm sitting here with jonathan taylor and and, and i traded you derrick henry when i came yeah, to the league right yeah. henry i already had jonathan taylor and i have patrick mahomes and 
and Justin Herbert, which is ridiculous. Two quarterback, league. quarterback like, league, those right. four players alone, uh, I should have cruised to a championship this year, and uh, heads are going to roll for Team Peacock in the offseason. Might have to might have to uh, fire my offensive coordinator. I, I got to be honest too. Team Williamson's got a bunch of draft picks stashed for next offseason too, with, mm-hmm. with with moves like that Derrick Henry one. So this could be a dynasty in the making. We're ahead of schedule. Wow, way ahead of schedule. <laughs> you guys should I'm not let me in that league, season. man. I warned you. You we'll let, let the Locked On Dynasty host in your league. That's what you get, man. Unbelievable. Yeah, make sure you check out Locked On Dynasty. <laughs> really, these moves are working. Scrapping their way past Team Peacock in the playoffs. Let's see if Davis Mills, his uh, real-life counterpart here, uh, and the Texans can do it to the Tennessee Titans. Uh, you said you're taking the points here with the Texans? Yeah, I just want the points. I think Houston keeps it close, but – Henry's run for 8 million yards against his team. Maybe he does it again. I feel bad for the the fans out there that um, – the Texans fans out there because I've only picked the Texans a couple times this year, and those are the two games that they would – they laid eggs even though they've done really? okay at covering some spreads. So I'm going to take the Titans at home by three here, uh, which should make the Texans fans listening happy. There you go. And we've got the Seattle Seahawks and Kansas City Chiefs coming up next. No, we talked about the Chiefs yesterday. Did we talk about the I think we did that. Yeah, we did that one yesterday, I think. We were talking about NFC playoffs. So let's talk a little bit more about some of the AFC playoff stuff and some of those teams that are playing on Christmas Day. We've got a Christmas Day triple header, and we've got a few more Christmas Eve games to make picks for as well coming up next. And you can bet on all of these games and find all of the lines at betonline.net, your number one source for sports betting, information, stats, news, and analysis. Make sure you get informed before you make those bets at Bet Online. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there. Of course, tons of NFL props and odds and lines every single week. Uh, college football, bowl season, NBA basketball, college basketball. Got it all at BetOnline.net. And of course, if you love sports podcasts, which I'm sure you do, you can even find those at Bet Online. Always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting information. Get over to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more at Bet Online, where the game starts. Did you know that driving high is considered driving under the influence? That's right. Driving under the influence of marijuana is against the law in every state, even in states where marijuana is legal. Uh, and that means driving high could get you a DUI. And if you think law enforcement officers can't tell when you're driving high, you're wrong. Your friends can tell. Your coworkers can tell. Even your parents can tell. Everyone can tell. So... What makes you think law enforcement officers don't know when you're driving high? Driving under the influence of marijuana can slow your response time and change how you perceive time and speed. So even if you think you're fine to drive when you're high, you're not. Because the bottom line is, if you feel different, you drive different. And driving high is driving under the influence. So remember, drive high, get a DUI paid for by the NHTSA. How about those Baltimore Ravens that will still not have Lamar Jackson, if I'm not mistaken, right? I haven't seen any new news on that one. I thought he was going to play. Is he going to I have not seen news today. We're recording this Thursday. I think I'm going operating under the uh, – I'm talking up both sides of my mouth here. I'm not positive <laughs> on that. I'm going to do a little digging while we speak. Here. Okay, I'm going to do a little bit more digging here. Uh, did you like some of the um, – I, th- I feel like there was some – in-game development for Desmond Ritter and the Falcons. Because this is the Falcons who, again, I mentioned the Saints just a minute ago, have an opportunity to um, to still win this division in the NFC South, led by a rookie quarterback, Desmond Ritter. Started out very slow, the offense yeah, did, but did. they got a lot better as the game went along. Can that continue against the Baltimore Ravens defense here in Week 16 is a big question uh, while we try to decipher if Lamar Jackson is going to play or not. I know he was not at practice he, yet this week, so we'll see. Didn't practice Wednesday, didn't practice Thursday. So I'm going to yeah. operate under the assumption that he's missing another game. And they're yeah. in such good shape. They they basically have to win one more game to get in. So I'll take the seven points. I mean, this is going to be the quickest game in NFL history. They, these two teams just run like crazy. I do think Ritter showed a little bit of promise, and I'm expecting it to be better in this one. That's a pass funnel, and I'm, you know, in, in Baltimore, it's really hard to run against those guys. But boy, the, the Baltimore passing game is a disaster with Lamar, let alone with Huntley. I just think this is a close game that is over super fast. I'll take seven points for sure. 
Yeah, low scoring. Tyler Huntley's yeah. in a quarterback. And so the Scrappy Falcons, I'm going to take the points as well with Baltimore favored by a touchdown here at Bet Online. And I guess when you get later into the week, you might want to wait. Um, or maybe you don't want to wait because if Lamar Jackson plays, it changes things. It'll change the line as well. Sure. So if you're confident since he hasn't practiced yet that he won't play this week, I think it's smart for the Ravens to hold him out here at nine and five. I mean, they are fighting for their playoff lives as well and, and trying to get seeding there, but they're in a pretty good spot. I think it's yeah, probably smart you don't push it with Lamar Jackson, even though you're trying to win every single game, right? Um, but They're in mean, jeopardy of losing the division, but I think they're going to get in the playoffs no matter what. Exactly, and you want to have yeah. the home teams too, and I'm sure they want to win the division, but um, you, you'd rather have – you'd rather be a wild card team with Lamar Jackson than right. a Perfect division winner so. without him. No play. doubt, no doubt. And he's going to take punishment, as we talked about a minute ago. Taking points again. We're taking a lot of points here today, Matt. Yeah, these teams are running like crazy. Give me points. And let's move on to the triple header now on Sunday, Christmas Day. The Green Bay Packers at 6-8. and eight. Not mathematically eliminated yet. We might see a mathematically eliminated team that, that's playing Jordan Love, but this is still the Aaron Rodgers Packers playing a little better ball recently at the 8-6 and six Miami Dolphins. Miami Dolphins favored by four at home. Yeah, I'm not worried about Miami. I know they lost three in a row, but they're running the football. Losing the Buffalo in that manner, to me, was a positive more than a negative. Um, but nobody seems to notice Green Bay's playing a lot better lately, especially their offense. Like the la- I mean, they're kind of like a top 10 offense all of a sudden. They do it differently than they used to. I think they keep this close enough, but I like Miami to win. I, I kind of agree with you there. I- I'm going to go the other side, though, and think Miami is going to – get back to putting up a lot of points and Mm -hmm. uh, have a nice little, you know, because Green Bay played, what, five degrees? And they're going to go play 70 degrees, I think, in Miami (laughs) Yeah, right. uh, this week. So, you know, maybe they're – I mean, it's a little muggy. I I did see a couple of anecdotes this week with – it was a Ross. It was your your guy Ross Tucker? Maybe talked about it. He's, or no, it was, okay. it was, I don't know. It was, maybe it's Joe Thomas. It was a former offensive lineman. It was basically like, look, it's harder to go play in the in the warm weather in December in Florida yeah, than yeah. it is to go play in the cold weather somewhere else. In my opinion, that's what he said. So especially if you're three hundred pounds, right? <laughs> that's true. Maybe it's <laughs> maybe it's different if you grew up in Florida and you're 190, or if you grew up uh, somewhere else and you yeah. are. Uh, Tyree Hill might uh, might object to the way yeah. the linemen think about it. Yeah. But give me the Dolphins here. I like I like the Dolphins. Yeah, I know we need to get moving, but I kind of wish the Packers had one more win because they would be an interesting playoff team in the NFC. I'd rather see them than the Giants or Seattle or, you know, I mean, I, I, they could at least make some noise with Rodgers. Apologies to Broncos and Rams fans, and you already kind of badmouthed this game earlier on. Might not be paying too close attention to this one on Christmas Day. It's much a, it's a snoozer compared to what the schedule makers thought this would be on Christmas Day with the four and ten Broncos at the four and ten Rams. Broncos favored by two and a half. Broncos D's good, and the offense is showing a little bit of life. Can't say much of anything good about the Rams. I think Denver wins by a field goal. Last one here is the Buccaneers at six and eight. They uh, they need to win some football games here and make sure they win that division and get into the playoffs. The Cardinals, who sure. have been a disaster. Yeah, <laughs> four and <laughs> ten. And at home, giving up seven and a half points here. We got, the, we got the Buccaneers on the road favored by seven and a half. I don't think the Buccaneers have beaten anybody by seven and a half, let alone know. traveling you know, a couple thousand miles to do so. I mean, if Houston was playing Arizona right now, I think I would take the Texans. I mean, I think Arizona's in that bad of state. You know, they fired their O-line coach. The GM left for medical reasons. They're on their third quarterback. Everyone's probably going to get fired in the building. But can Tampa beat anyone by seven and a half? They're not good. I guess I'll take the Bucs only because I can't take the Cardinals against anybody right now. You like, like a, a 13-3 to three game, right? Could be, right. Still cover the number. Yeah. I hope, uh, hope the this... defense scores or, you know. Oh, this is hard for me. Yeah. And because this is everything tells me, oh, you home underdog, seven and a half points. And the Bucs right, are right. great. But no, this is this is maybe a get right game for the Buccaneers here to go big on the Cardinals. So uh, I, I'm reluctantly going to take the Buccaneers here. Um, did you see the latest two, which is like the the fired offensive line coach said it was a mistaken identity and potentially oh, really? people are talking about how because he's like kind of a larger guy, bald goatee. And then they put the pictures of him and Steve Kime, who had this mysterious leave of absence now and has is bald with a goatee. And 
the offensive line coach is suing because it's wow. his identity. It wasn't him. And people are putting this all together. Like this is not over yet with the Cardinals. And it's like, it's like, Oh man, bonkers situation here for Arizona. So not a good situation. So yeah, let's go Buccaneers. Uh, just before we recorded, my son said, I've been watching Cardinals hard knocks and it's like one thing after another, just, Hey, you know, it's, it's, they picked the right team for the and they're probably hiding a lot of stuff too, because they don't oh. want to show everything. Right. hundred percent unbelievable all right that's week happy 16. holidays everybody everyone. happy holidays merry christmas have fun with your families and watching football matt and i back to break it all down monday right here peacock and williamson